Pythagoras is an eccentric, even strange philosopher who lived in the mid-6th century BCE. We don't know his exact dates, partly because he never wrote anything during his lifetime, but depended, like Socrates, on his followers and his students writing his philosophy for him. As a child, it's likely that you learned Pythagoras's theorem, which is, of course, that the square of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the square of the remaining two sides. But this theorem was known both in Egypt and in Babylon long before Pythagoras lived. He was a mystic, and a lot of his philosophical ideas seem very strange to us in the 21st century. According to Pythagoras, though, one of, and one of his most intriguing ideas is that the ultimate nature of reality consists of numbers. This idea developed out of his theory of music, in which he proved that the intervals between musical tones could be expressed as ratios between the first four integers or numbers. That is, of course, the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. Since part of Pythagoras' religious teachings consisted in the claim that music has a special power over the soul, infused as it is into the fabric of the universe, according to him, the belief that number is the ultimate nature of reality just followed from that initial belief. For Pythagoras, the number should be worshipped or venerated, and the patterns it created should be worshipped or venerated as well which again seems very strange to us today. For example, the triangle that could be created from 10 points, that is the number 10, was considered holy to the Pythagoreans. The Pythagoreans thought that the number 10 was a perfect number because it was made up of the sum of the first four numbers. If you look at a pyramid made of points, 10 points, you'll see that the Pythagoreans believed that the point, the one, was a, an, just one point. Two represented for them the line, three the surface, and four the solid. So it was the beginning of geometry. And since they believed that 10 was the perfect number, they also believed in 10 heavenly bodies, the five planets, the sun, the moon, the earth, and a mysterious and invisible counter-earth. They may well have invented this counter-earth to make the celestial numbers add up to 10. All of these revolved around a central fire. After his death, Pythagoras's school split into two separate schools. One continued to teach his religious and mystical teachings, while the other concentrated on his mathematical and scientific insights. The second school, the one that concentrated on his mathematical and scientific insights, believed that the nature of the universe must be essentially arithmetic. Units of numbers, points, were somehow thought to possess spatial dimensions and to be the ultimate constituents of all objects. This idea was criticized by Zeno and a number of, and Parmenides and a bunch of other philosophers. The Pythagorean cosmogony also encountered grave problems due to Pythagoras' own discovery. This isn't known for sure, um, but it's 
certainly part of the mythology of Pythagoras, that he was the first person to discover irrational numbers and that he had shown that the ratio of a diagonal through a square to its sides can't be expressed as a whole number. And this created a problem for Pythagoras. The, because the incommensurability of the diagonal led to the discovery or invention by him of irrational numbers. Supposedly, Pythagoras tried to suppress any knowledge of irrational numbers during his lifetime and forbade any of his followers um, to discuss or work with irrational numbers which seems particularly strange to us in the 21st century since irrational numbers are so great a part of so much math so much of mathematical theory today number theory and a number of other areas of mathematics so there's pythagoras um, there are links in the low bar one of them is to max tegmark who is a mathematician at MIT right now and believes that, in fact, numbers are the basis for all of reality. His work is also a little bit eccentric or considered a little bit eccentric among mathematicians, but it's still pretty intriguing stuff. So there'll be links in the low bar to his work as well. Thanks for listening. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.